One of the hard parts about passage making is figuring out when you're going to go to get there in the best, most comfortable way possible. How do you do that? Well, luckily, there are some technology pieces that are out there these days ready to help you. Welcome to the Boat Galley Podcast. Today, we have the incredible pleasure of talking to Jeremy Waters, the creator and inventor of FastSeas.com, which is a weather routing service. Jeremy, to start this out, will you just give us a little bit of your cruising background and what brought you to this idea? I started sailing uh, when I was four or five years old on, on dinghies and um, yeah, then my family started, uh, my parents started um, uh, sailing larger boats, uh, 28 foot uh, Dufour in the Mediterranean when we lived in North Africa and um, uh, you know, graduated up to a, a larger uh, 38 foot Janot uh, again in, in North Africa sailing the, the Mediterranean, um, spending a lot of summers sailing across to Spain and sailing to Costa del Sol and the Balearics and um, uh, and then in, in college um, uh, sailing um, in spring break in the Bahamas. Summers in the Caribbean was working for a, uh, Sail Caribbean, um, which is a um, a great uh, kind of adventure sailing school for high school kids and um, mid- middle school kids, and um, uh, sailing uh, either in the Virgin Islands or, or down island, a little more a little more blue water. Um, but uh, great experience for the kids uh, who come, and uh, kind of different levels of challenge available there. And then after college, uh, you know, pretty quickly bought bought our, our own boat, and uh, still still have that boat, uh, uh, an old Bristol Channel Cutter that um, that we've owned for uh, oh boy, probably close to twenty five years now, um, and have sailed that boat, um, bought her in, in Houston, in Texas, and um, sailed uh, for several years in the Bahamas and the Eastern Caribbean, uh, leewards and windwards. Um, and uh, down in Grenada and Trinidad and Bonaire, um, and all the way back up uh, the east coast of the U.S. to uh, the Chesapeake Bay, uh, where where we have her now and where she's been for um, a long time. A long time, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just for those of you who don't know, on the Boat Galley podcast, uh, Jeremy is my husband, so I have a little bit of of an inside look at this. When he says our Bristol Channel Cutter, it's mine as well as his. So, and Fast Seas was um, really kind of scratching my own itch. You know, um, one day I plan to go cruising again, and um, you know, I'm really interested in um, in 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 tools that that I would want um, when I'm when I'm cruising again, and. Um, I'm a an engineer, and you know, work as a software engineer these days, and um, you know, building this sort of stuff comes somewhat naturally, and is um, you know, personally satisfying to to build build tools like this, and it's like doubly satisfying when it's a a technology uh, project that scratches one itch and uh, a sailing product that scratches another itch, and and um, like I said, like you know, ends up being. A tool that I intend to use my myself um, when I go sailing again. That's kind of a fun thing here. But um, I remember when you started talking about building this product, you were really concentrating on thinking about what we would need when we go cruising. When we left and sailed uh, the first time for three years when we did that Eastern Caribbean trip, we that was right at the cusp. Uh, there kind of there wasn't major internet before we left, and when we came back, there was. Um, internet, everybody had email and what have you. And so seeing that growth um, and the technology availability has been kind of interesting and eye-opening from a sailing perspective and a cruising perspective over the last 25 years. When you built Fast Seas initially, did you have any idea that it was going to be something um, that other people could benefit from? Or were you really thinking that this was something you were building just for us? Since since day one, you know, I I built it for more than just me, clearly. Um, uh, you know, I, I built it um, uh, so it would be publicly available. And sure, trying to trying to hit a um, a budget friendly spot in the in the market. We cruise on a on a limited budget, and most of the people that we encounter out there cruising are on a limited budget. And uh, you know, weather and and safety decisions like that are a really kind of hard one um, to contemplate when you're choosing how to. How to use your your limited you know budgetary resources and whether you're going to pay for um, 
a, a weather uh, data delivery service um, like that and you know how, how much you're you're able to afford so I was certainly um, you know taking addressing our own budgetary needs but but also I think um, you know servicing um, an unmet uh, part of the market where you know I think some of the commercially available tools are out of reach for a lot of cruisers and um, and uh, you know I, I felt there was a valuable, uh, you know, service to be delivered there uh, and shared. Um, so when I, you know, when I first started developing it, I uh, I had it out there available as a, as a free service, um, and uh, you know it was great to have an engaged uh, you know group of sailors who were uh, out there actively using it and providing real world uh, feedback on how to how to tweak it and what features to add and h- how to make it better. Uh, and as that that grew, that quickly outstripped uh, the the free hosting uh, service that I had at the time. And uh, you know, I needed to put it on a more significant uh, platform so that it could handle the the increased usage of it, um, but also to, to make it more reliable. That you know, as people start to depend on a service like this, you want it to be um, reliably available and 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 not be. Um, uh, you know, broken or flaky, or um, you know, people waking up in the morning to to do their weather routine and uh, find that that things aren't working this morning. Um, you know, I've been out there as a cruiser and just know how you know how how, how significant um, weather uh, uh, is to the daily planning cycle and um, and how much how much time we we invest um, in as part of our daily routine around uh, getting weather data and um, planning our day. So can you give us a little bit of information about what Fast Seas is and what it does for somebody who is checking out fastseas.com, that's F-A-S-T-S-E-A-S.com. What are they going to find and what would they use it for? Who would want to go and find your site and use it? So Fast Seas is a, a weather routing service. And uh, you know, what, what does that mean? Um, to, to explain it to people who don't sail, uh, I, 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 I describe it as, uh, oh, this is like Google Maps for, for sailboats, except... Uh, you know, where Google Maps has like a finite set of roads to deal with, um, whether, you know, sailing, weather, routing, and uh, services like this don't have roads. Uh, you just have open water. Um, and uh, to some extent, it's a, it's a much more complicated uh, puzzle than what Google Maps solves for you when you ask for directions from one city to another. And that, you know, not only are there no roads, but um, the, the, the conditions uh, that you're going to get uh, along that route are going to change over time, which is going to affect uh, what course you can steer and how fast you can travel. And so, uh, you know, in that regard, it, it is an exponentially more complicated puzzle than than what Google Maps solves. So that's that's what the service is, is geared towards doing, is um, r- giving you ri- routing advice um, on how to reach a destination, a spe- you know, a destination you specify from a point of origin um, that that you specify, and uh, it looks at the uh, the GFS weather uh, data, which is available for um, 16 days out to the future, and uh, will actually stepwise um, evaluate um, typically millions of um, of routing possibilities that you could choose um, to to get from your start point to your end point, and solves all of them, and to, to, to determine which one is the is the most efficient and you know that definition of like efficient is complicated um you know if you're a racer efficient is just how do i get there as quickly as possible and uh if you're if you're uh, a cruiser more inclined to, to to seek the comfortable way to get there you might have limits as to how much bashing you're willing to deal with and uh how much bad weather you're willing to deal with and so um Fast Seas ju- that does give you those um, th- those abilities to to tune your own personal definition of efficient because sometimes efficient isn't just about speed sometimes it's about comfort. Do people have to buy the service to be able to try it out? So no, um, you know I described earlier that I started the service with um, with it being free and and I've retained um, certainly a a part of that as well that I think is important. The, the, there is a free tier to the service. It does limit you as to you know how many requests you can make on a monthly basis, and um, and then there's the paid tier of the service. Um, 
all of the routing functionality is exactly the same between the, the free service and, and the paid service. Uh, the extra functionality that you get from the paid service is, um, well, unlimited requests, but also the ability to uh, make requests through uh, either email, which facilitates um, uh, various forms of satellite communication or single sideband or HF communication. Uh, also to make requests via uh, the Garmin inReach or, or DeLorme inReach uh, network, which is uh, a bit of a kind of a unique um, messaging platform that's not quite like email. It's more like communicating by tweet, <laughs> um, which has some some specific requirements around making the 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 response very uh, compact. When somebody goes on to the site, what are they going to see and what should they do? When you initially arrive on the site, you'll see the current weather uh, displayed by uh, a partner, uh, windy.com, who produce a very great uh, set of weather visualizations available on, on the windy.com uh, website. Uh, and through that partnership, I'm able to use uh, some of the layers um, as the as the user interface in um, in FASIS. Uh, you know, I think Windy do a great job of figuring out how to uh, present very complicated weather data in a very easy and intuitive way to to understand and visualize what's going on. Um, and so uh, that 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 certainly is like. Um, a familiar experience for people who are already know windy.com when you arrive on fast seas it's like oh this is windy.com with um with sail weather routing and that's that's pretty much what you've got um so in designing fast seas um you know one of my goals was to make it as as simple and intuitive as possible so trying to eliminate a lot of the complexity that that you have to deal with when you try and use fast seas and um uh, you know these tools often have a complexity barrier associated with them, and, and that they often like straight up um, insist that you've got to bring some uh, some information about about your boat, and that's typically called a a polar diagram, which is a um, a uh, a graphical representation or or a table that depicts the performance of your boat at different points of sail and different wind strengths. Um, and that's great if, you, if, if that's available from, from the manufacturer of your boat um, and you can just, you know, upload it, copy and paste it and, uh, and, and use um, that polar uh, performance data that uh, the manufacturer may have provided. But if you don't, um, that leaves you with a puzzle of having to create uh, the polar data, the polar performance data for, for your vessel, um, which uh, can be uh, an unnecessary uh, barrier. So, uh, you know, one thing that I built into FASTES was the ability to generate uh, a rough polar based on very few questions. So, uh, you know, it'll ask you what the water line length of your of your vessel is, and it'll ask you what your what your closest point of sail is. And between those two numbers that you give it, it'll generate um, a polar, at least an initial polar that you can then further tweak if you want to. Uh, and once you've set up your polar, you can then um, uh, you can then use your mouse to literally click on the map and specify um, you know where where your start point is and, and where your destination is. And uh, you can also set a you know departure time either now or in the future, uh, and it'll calculate the route. Um, pretty quick process, you know, depending on the length of the route, it might take um, you know just a couple seconds, or it might take up to uh, up to twenty seconds or something like that. Um, but it's you know it's interactive and um, uh, you can you can play kind of what if games of like what if I left today what if I left tomorrow what if I didn't go as far it aids you in making those uh, those passage making decisions. So you talked about comfort. Is there a place to put in other parameters other than just the waterline length and the closest point of sale that you can do? So yeah, the comfort parameters um, break down. Uh, around wind speeds and, and what wind speeds you're, you're willing to, um, to handle. Um, and, uh, you know, as sailors, we all know, like, you know, 30 knots when you're beating into it is very different from 30 knots when you, when you're running. Um, and so the comfort parameters are, are geared towards that. Um, you know, how many knots are you willing to, 
to handle beating. Maybe you only want to deal with 15 knots on the nose, um, and maybe you're willing to deal with you know 25 knots running. So it'll let you specify those parameters in ter- terms of uh, you know predicted you know forecast sustained wind speeds uh, as well as uh, forecast uh, maximum gust conditions. We all know that you know gusty conditions um, can really uh, dominate your experience sailing. Um, you know if it's uh, 10 knots gusting 20, um, you know, quite often that just feels like 20 knots most of the time. Um, so it's important to, to look at what the gust conditions are and consider that in your, in your comfort criteria. So you spent some time talking about, uh, sailboats. Does, is FASI something that works only for monohulls? Does it work for catamarans? Does it work for power boats? Um, certainly when you're talking about sail angle, that seems to leave power boats out of the equation. Um, do you have a spot for that in your, in your, work so power versus sail uh talk about that one first um you know i I did have some uh of the early um uh kind of pilot um users um you know the early adopters of fast seas who were in who were power boaters and interested in um uh, having a model that would work for them for large displacement uh you know trawlers and um you know ocean going um displacement power boats the, the the routing calculations actually work the same, except the polar data is typically upside down, right? So like power vessels do um, perform at their worst um, when you're headed into weather. Um, and uh, certainly in moderate conditions, that's not true of, of sailboats. Sailboats perform at their best when they're, when they're beating into it um, or a little bit off of beating. And so similar to Fast Seas' capability to uh, calculate at least a start point polar for you, Similar process is, is available for uh, power boaters where, uh, based on waterline length, it will come up with a um, an initial polar, and um, you can use that and tweak it from that point forward. Monohulls, catamarans, trimarans, uh, you know, various uh, sailcraft. Um, certainly the polar generation, uh, the automatic polar generation is geared towards um, a monohull profile. The automatic generation of, of, of a polar will, will not work well for a catamaran sailor or a trimaran sailor. So not to say you can't use fast seas, but uh, if you have a multi-hull, um, you are going to likely have to do um, a lot more work around developing your polar to get it to something that um, more closely resembles the, the known performance of, of your vessel. Is that a tweak that you have in mind? Because I know one of the things you've spent you spend some time on is actually listening to what your users have to say for feedback and what they're looking for in terms of features. Is adding uh, kind of an easy polar kind of a thing for catamarans on your list, or is that just technically a lot more difficult given the differences in boats? So no, I, I think that would be um, uh, an interesting feature to add, and probably not uh, not a whole lot of effort uh, to add it. I know weather routing is um, possibly something that not a lot of people necessarily think about until they're ready to go on passage, and then maybe they'll subscribe to a Chris Parker, or they'll look at the weather, or they'll put something out on social media to say, "Hey, I'm going to go from here to here. What could, what do you have to tell me about it?" What do you wish people knew about weather routing and um, when it's important to use so that you can kind of educate our listeners around the whole concept? So weather routing like this um, generally is best uh, used for longer passages. So not not ideally suited for, uh, you know, a day sail across the Chesapeake or, or you know, a day sail down, down the coast of, of Georgia or, or something like that. Um, but far more useful for longer term uh, passage making uh, and planning decisions. And weather routing is just another another tool, right? And um, you know, as as cruisers, we we rarely rely on one source of information. Uh, you know, um, you know, we might listen to Chris Parker in the morning. We might get our own. Um, uh, forecast information from the National Weather Service, uh, and we might use uh, you know that additional ans- ancillary services like Fast Seas as well. And all of this provides different perspectives on the weather. And um, when when you see alignment in the different perspectives um, that people or your data sources uh, give you on the weather, you can that may increase your confidence that hey, it may may actually turn out that way. You know what weather forecasts have improved, but you know clearly. 
um, the further you go out into the future, the, the certainty uh, or the probability that that forecast turns out uh, as, as forecast uh, d- rapidly declines. Uh, you know, beyond three, five days, um, uh, the, you know, the accuracy definitely drops off. So, uh, yeah, I think, I think the most important thing is to, um, you know, regard this as another data point. Uh, you know, it is not going to be perfect. It's only as good as, as the information it is provided to, to crunch and, um, and come up with a, with a solution. Um, you know, it's only as good as the, as the weather forecast is going to be, and it's only as good as the, the information that, that you give it um, around the performance of your boat. Let's say I uh, go on to fasties.com and I want to sail from Norfolk, Virginia to Bermuda. And I pop in that passage and, and it's a Monday and I'm simplifying this greatly, but I, but, uh, so on Monday I pop it in, it says, yep, Tuesday is going to be a great day to go. Or that's how I interpret the information that I've gotten from Fassies is that Tuesday looks like a great day to go. So do I then just take that and blindly go with that? Or do I query Fassies every day for an updated forecast for the different route that it might take me? So what you're, what you're getting at is, um, departure planning which is uh, finding your finding your weather window and so weather w- weather windows are, are looking at at the at how the forecast evolves over over time and uh, you know rarely are you gonna decide today that oh I'm gonna do a four four day passage tomorrow and you look at the weather for you get one weather forecast and it looks like you got a weather weather window and you just go like you might do that but uh, most people will look at the forecast over a period of days to see how stable or unstable how consistent or you know how much variability is there to to the forecast over time and um, you know once once you're doing that you can you can identify what is what is a real opportunity and um, you know what is um, you know what, what? What are normal conditions, and what are bad conditions, and where where is the opportunity to to make that passage? Uh, you know, built into fast seas, the, there is um, some uh, departure planning functionality, which uh, lets you analyze um, for your given uh, cho- for your for, lets you analyze for your chosen passage between your, your start point and your finish point. Um, you know what the what the basic metrics of the passage are. Um, over the next 15 days where you know for for a departure um, for a departure date on on daily cadence so you know if I left today if I left tomorrow if I left the day after going out 15 days it'll give you the the basic metrics of um, of what the weather picture is for that passage uh, you know what the wind what the average wind speed is what the maximum wind speed is how much time you're going to be beating how much time you're you're beam reaching um and it it gives you that course that quick course me- measure that lets you identify um a window that might be approaching and then you can continue to track that on a daily basis like check it again tomorrow and see if that window is still there uh, and of course the closer the window comes to to you uh, you know if that pattern is uh, sustained, um, then then you can depart with with greater confidence that um, that you've chosen um, the right weather window and you know the best opportunity to make that passage comfortably. So I know one of the questions that I have because I don't understand necessarily the differences between these things is is it a website? Is it an app? How to uh, is it a website or is it an app? So it is a website, and uh, it is it is not an app. Although you know the line between websites and apps these days actually gets pretty pretty blurred. Um, you know, particularly uh, depending on how the website is designed, you can place a shortcut to the website on your phone or, or pad, and it will behave very app like. Um, with with the caveat that in its current form, it does need internet access. So if you're if you're using the website <laughs> or or launching it in that app-like mode from a, a pad or a phone, um, it it does need internet access in order to to work. Um, yeah, you, know, you will not find an app for it on the uh, on any of the app stores or anything like that. Um, for you know for for those situations where you don't have internet access, uh, you know the way to use it is not through through the website, obviously, um, but through the 
the email responder or the or the inReach capability, where um, at that point you're dependent on your ability to to send and receive email or inReach messages, and so that might be um, you know some form of satellite communication or um, single sideband or HF um, email communication um, or inReach. So how does that work? Um, what do I need to have to access it when I don't have internet? Right. So if you were planning on doing a passage to Bermuda when you're still um, on shore, uh, at, uh, where you're departing from, and you still have internet access, you would be using the website to you know do your your daily uh, look at the weather, running the route, and um, you know, tracking the the coming window. Um, you know, all the way up to your your departure date, and once you're offshore, uh, you'd be using the the email responder to uh, to get updates on on your passage. And the email responder, um, you know, there there are instructions for it on, on the website. Uh, so maybe we can link that in the show notes. Um, but uh, generally speaking, you have to you have to send a um, a coded email to the FASC service, and that coded email would specify what your uh, current GPS location is, um, what the location of your destination is. It'll respond with a a GPX file, which is a file type that can contain uh, routes and other data that can be presented either on a chart plotter or uh, navigation software. Um, You know, there are numerous manufacturers and and, uh, software packages that support GPX files. And uh, so contained in the GPX file would be the waypoints for the route. Um, you know, updated uh, based on on the request you you just sent, um, and with each of the waypoints would be contained the predicted weather information at that waypoint. So uh, you know, wind speed, direction, uh, and such would be um, uh, provided in the GPX file for each of the waypoints along the route. I mean, this sounds like it's an incredible, an incredibly useful service. Uh, and what? Could what do people expect to pay for this when they go onto the site? There's the free tier and there's the paid tier. So what would it actually cost somebody to use Fast Seas, and do you have to use it for a certain amount of time? So yeah, you can you can go to the website and um, like you said, you know, the, you can use it for free. Um, uh, you can just sign up and kick the tires and try it out. Um, and uh, if you and the, the the paid subscriptions um, step you up to un, un, unlimited use, so um, uh, that's that's the difference there. Um, all of the paid subscriptions give you exactly the same functionality. There are three different price points that just give you different discounts based on um, how much of a of a sub- subscription commitment you're making. So um, uh, on the most economical end of, of the scale. Uh, if you sign up for one year of service, it's uh, sixty dollars, so um, the equivalent of five dollars a month. Uh, in the middle uh, kind of tier, there's a six-month plan for forty-five dollars, and on the uh, kind of pay-as-you-go plan, there's a monthly plan for uh, ten dollars a month. And those are all. So the sixty dollars, did they? Is it billed five dollars every month, or is it sixty dollars up front? It's sixty dollars uh, billed once um, when you uh, when you purchase the subscription. And do you have to log in or anything um, when you uh, when you want to go when you want to try and kick the tires and try the free tier before you want to upgrade or to see if you want to upgrade? Do you can you do it anonymously or do you have to actually um, put some information in there? So you do have to sign up and sign in when you use the website. Uh, it uses um, uh, Google, Gmail, or Facebook, or Twitter uh, identities so that you don't have to actually establish uh, an account and a password just for Fasties. It'll use any of your uh, existing Google or Facebook or Twitter, Twitter identities. Um, and uh, it, needs, it, it needs to know who you are because uh, you're going to provide it, you know, the details of your boat, your, your comfort criteria. Uh, and it wants to store that so that um, it it wants to store that information so that um, it's available next time when you come back to the website. It remembers who you are and uh, will will keep on working using the the details you provided previous previously. Well, thanks, Jeremy. Uh, I have learned a lot, and I live in the same household that you do. I hope that our listeners have also learned a lot about 
weather routing, the difference between passage planning and departure planning, why you would want a weather routing service and what makes Fast Seas unique and special, the fact that it's a tool that you have in your toolbox along with a lot of other ones. It's not just something that you use standalone and it's the be all end all. Uh, I certainly love the idea of a tool that's been created for cruisers by a cruiser. And I know how much time and effort you put into us into it. So thanks so much for your time today. And don't forget to check out fastseas.com to learn more. F-A-S-T-S-E-A-S.com. Boat Cali podcast listeners get an exclusive 10% discount by using the code GALLEY2019. That's G-A-L-L-E-Y 2019. Well, thank you, Nika. And um, yeah, check out Fast Seas and um, send us comments. Um, you know, your thoughts about it, ways to make it better, um, or things that worked for you, or whatever's on your mind. Thanks so much for listening to the Boat Galley podcast today. We look forward to answering questions that you have about the cruising lifestyle, whether you're learning about it, investigating it, or actively planning to get yourself out there and go. If you like what you've heard, please subscribe, share it with friends, and drop us a line. We do love to hear from our listeners. Have a great day.